This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Interim is not a biblical word, nor a theological word, nor even a church word. It is far more suited for other settings in this life. A college president resigns, and an interim president is named to come on board. A professional or college football coach gets fired, and an interim coach is, is soon hired. Contending parties enter into an interim agreement to allow for a cooling off period so that cooler heads can go to work and settle disputes. But interim, in the sense of interim mentality, has no real place and no real life in the life of the church. And the reason is, is that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And Jesus Christ is not interim anything. I want you to look at the ministry, just an overall, just a glimpse of his ministry. Yes, it was for only three years. That's more or less the time of an interim ministry. But his ministry was anything but that. Look at what he did. He called disciples. He taught disciples. He trained disciples. He equipped disciples. He empowered disciples. And then he commissioned disciples. Listen to what his last commission was to them in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and remember that I am with you always to the end of the age. After his death and resurrection, Jesus became the head of the church, as the Apostle Paul would claim, saying that, that the church is the body of Christ with Jesus Christ its head and Him calling all the shots. Now, in my book, there's absolutely nothing interim about any of that. The work and ministry of the church is ongoing. The mission of the church is always before the people of God. It doesn't go anywhere. Now, you can call me and introduce me as the interim preacher, and that's okay. But let it be in name only. Don't, don't for a minute look on me as the real interim preacher or serving in an interim time, but a preacher who's just here for a shorter period of time. Don't get sucked into believing that an interim, an interim period is an in-between time and then an interim minister and then he comes and then he goes. That's different from saying that a preacher is here for a shorter span of time. Don't get caught believing and then be tempted to act on that belief to put God's mission on a shelf for a while. Interim, a la interim thinking, interim mindset. It's not good. And it's not of the church. Because the heartbeat of what God wants done in the world does not, will not, and never goes on hiatus. Neither should you. Instead, instead, keep your nose to the wheel. Continue to be about God's mission and ministry. The, the foundation upon which you stand and build is solid, allowing you to do this very thing. These opening verses in the letter to the Ephesians are one great truth after another grounding you and securing you squarely in God's love and in God's promises. I want you to listen again to just a portion of this passage. You are chosen in Christ to be holy and blameless, blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessing, showered by God's grace in Christ, forgiven, redeemed, and adopted as God's children in Christ, having gained your inheritance in Him. Furthermore, you have been made privy to God's great will been marked by the Holy Spirit that you might live
for the praise of his glory. This passage is literally packed with fabulous truths that take root and find their light in you and in you and in you and in each of you and in all of you. That's how God works. And when the Apostle Paul wrote about this, it was all in one sentence. These 11 verses are the longest single sentence in the Bible. It's like Paul has packed all of this in the, a cohesive bundle. And he doesn't want you to take a breath, a break. He doesn't even want you to take a breath until you've heard it all. Because at the end of the day, you have it all. You have all that God gives in Jesus Christ to sustain and carry you in your faith journey and to carry on with God's great work. Oh, it can be easy to look on this time when this preacher is here as a time being. Time that doesn't count for much in the larger scheme of things. But that thinking can also lead you to sit on the sidelines and wait around until the real preacher comes. Well, I urge you, don't go down that road. Why? Because Paul has written this letter to the Ephesians. And in writing it, of course, Paul is no longer in Ephesus, but he wants those Ephesian people to know who's still in Ephesus, namely God. And he wants them to know what God has done and what God is capable of. And by faith in God, what they as God's people are capable of. And then, not only does he have chapter 1, but then he goes on a little later on in that same book, in that same letter, and he writes this. Now to him who by the power and work within us is able to do and accomplish far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. In him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice. Now, I'm a little slow about a lot of things, but when I read this and read it again, there's no mention here of waiting around for an interim preacher or wandering through an interim time. No word whatsoever of, of setting anything aside or putting anything on the shelf. But there's a lot of talk about re-solidifying their faith, redoubling their discipleship efforts, recasting their life to be able to more faithfully walk in God's ways. But somewhere along the line, from then until now, the church has picked up on the notion that, that when the preacher leaves, when the preacher leaves, you shift gears. You coast along. You can't do real ministry. You can't hardly do anything at all until a new preacher comes. But like I say, don't you believe that for a New York man. You believe that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And that you as the church are God's chosen instrument to fulfill his will and purpose in this whole world. 
And with all that's been poured into your life, according to the first chapter of Ephesians, and with all of the needs that, that are out there in this tear-stained world, you not only can forge ahead, but God wants you to forge ahead right now and forward His will. Now, don't put your faith or this church in neutral or in part. Letting your faith and this church simply coast or idle. Waiting around for the permanent preacher and what he or she wants to do. Don't settle just to do the minimum and the muddle through. Make this period not so much an interim time or an interval time in which nothing much happens, but instead make it an integral time. Integral to your ongoing faithfulness to God and to Jesus Christ. Remember Ephesians chapter 1 and what's been given to you in Jesus Christ. The ways that you've been blessed by Jesus Christ and how you've been empowered by Jesus Christ. And all of this has come from God and into you right now. There is no place in the church, no place in the church to back away from the civil land. The need for ministry doesn't be put on hold. Therefore, ministry should be put on hold. Ephesians says, You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, branded with the seal of the empowering Holy Spirit, all to live for the praise of His glory. Don't allow an interim mentality to creep into what you do for God. You king of the body of Christ. And Jesus Christ is the head. And he has so prepared and so equipped you right now. His awesome and incredible work. You've been given everything you need to do to do all that it takes to embrace, enliven, enhance, and enrich your life and ministry here. Now, you can be tempted to believe that. You can, for example, slack off when it comes to worship because it's an interim preacher and the real preacher's not here. Well, a preacher is here. And this preacher tells you today in no uncertain terms that worship is not about you. And it's not about the preacher. Worship is about God. So don't forget to be. Stay active in worship. And encourage others to do the same. The worship hour is the most significant hour, bar none, in your week and in every week. To praise and glorify God is your primary aim in life. It's what you've been wired for. And so with energy, exuberance, and enthusiasm, make worship even better than it is right now or ever been. Your journey with God doesn't go through some kind of an interim period, so why should your worship of God go through some kind of interim period? You make worship everything it can be and then some because that is what the church does. It would be easy to slip into an interim mentality and to step back from, for example, God-ordained ministry and 
commission and the belief that, that the next preacher will have his own ideas or her own plans about what it is that should take place and how it all should unfold. And so you better not do too much because you might get in the way of all that might be coming. You. You remember Ephesians chapter 1 and what you've been given what you've been blessed with and what you've been empowered to do. You remember that you, as the people of God, you have been endowed with vision, with God's vision. It was Peter on the day of Pentecost, echoing the prophet Job and quoting God when he said, I will pour out my spirit on everyone, everyone, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Who is that? That's you. God wants his people. That's you, you, you. God wants his people all of his people to capture the vision of his ongoing work for you in Jesus Christ. You keep discerning where God is leading you. And though the way may not be absolutely clear and you may not be absolutely sure how things are going to unfold or absolutely convinced about how it will all happen, you trust God, believing that the future belongs to God. And that you belong to God. As the church strike out in faith toward what God has prepared and is prepared for you. Don't put on the praise. This faith journey that God has given you is far too adventurous, so far too exciting, far too fulfilling to do anything else but to continue in the way that you're going. God only knows one gear, drive. He only knows one way, forward. And he only knows one speed, go, go, go. The apostle's word to the Colossians, or for Christians of every age, Continue, he writes, continue, securely established and stable and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you have heard and believe. Continue, the apostle writes. Don't settle for downtime when the time is right, like it is. Don't go into a holding pattern where there's a faith journey that continues to beckon. Don't put on the brakes when God wants you to give it the gas. Enter in the sense of enter on mentality. It's not biblical. And it's not the church. Because of what Paul wrote to those Ephesians. Eugene Peterson has written his own version of the Bible. It's called The Message. It's very popular. You may have a copy and have read a copy. I want to read our scripture reading from what he transcribes from scripture into his book. How blessed is God. And what a blessing he is. He's the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and he takes us to the high places of blessing in him. Long before he had laid down all his foundations, he had us in mind. It settled on us as the focus of his love, to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross. We're a free people, free of penalties and punishments chalked up by all of our misdeeds, and not just barely free either, abundantly free. 
He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him, everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet Earth. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everything. It's in Christ in you. Once you heard the truth and believed it, this message of your salvation, found yourselves home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. The signal from God is the first installment on what's coming. A reminder that we'll get everything that God has planned for us. Praise Him and glory in His life. That's not veteran stuff. That's God's stuff. Of the highest order. And so integral to your faith and faithfulness to Him. Interim may be good for a lot of things. But don't let it seep into your life. You're too marked and sealed by the Holy Spirit. You're too scripted to live for the praise of God's glory. You be the church. Jesus Christ is the head. You be the church. You and me. Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray.